If you have just started Mortal Online 2 and you're very lost and confused, this is the video for you. Mortal Online 2 is running a stress test right now up until the end of the weekend and I've been sent hundreds of stress keys to give away to you guys so if you want one just subscribe like the video and then leave a comment below and I'll reply to you by the weekend. If you're super desperate, you can also jump on my Discord linked below and ask for one. But be warned, the purpose of this test is to push hardware limits and get mass feedback. This is not at all the finished product. Many areas and systems are still very much incomplete. But in this video, we're going over how to start out, how to make money so you can buy armor and weapons. And I'll also be showing you how to get started with some of these 600 crafting skills that exist in the game. But this time, instead of playing an archer, I'm gonna go with a warrior build with an extremely high strength and a very high health stat as well. So as soon as you jump into the game, you're going to spawn into an area called Haven, which acts as a tutorial island with no player versus player at all. As soon as you spawn into the game, if you actually head over to that really bright beacon over there, you can actually spawn into the main game which has PvP and just start playing in that world. But I highly recommend instead, if you're new to the game, start out in this tutorial area so you can get to grips with the game's mechanics before entering the real world. Don't worry, all your experience and skills do carry over. So the first thing you're going to need to do once you spawn in is press the tab button and then you're going to want to go over here to Clade Gifts. Now, if you go on the outer edge, each one of these is kind of like a perk and you have 11 perk points to spend. Depending on your character race and what their attributes are, they're going to be different. So to buy one of these, all you need to do is hold down the ability and each one of these are different. For example, this one gives me plus two strength or this one gives me the smell of blood, makes you stronger and regain health every time you damage someone. So if I go ahead and buy this, because it's an active ability, I can actually drag it and put it on my ability bar. So now every time I press control and one at the same time, so every time I hit something, I get a little bit of health back. So make sure you go ahead and spend all your points and don't worry about experimenting with these since you can press this button to unlearn them and reset them at any time currently. But that's what my setup looks like for now. You also have titles in the game as well. You can see your statistics here, like your thirst, hunger, your max speed, your armor weight and your carry weight, and also your body heat and stuff like that. But right now you don't really need to worry about it. It's not like super important currently. You will start the game with a torch and a sword. So you can go ahead and equip your torch by just putting it in your inventory and then just pressing the X button to go ahead and draw that torch. Now the game has a directional block system so by looking in a direction and pressing right click you'll be able to block in that direction. The same with attacking in that direction so you can obviously stab people like this or you can swing to either side by using the directional button like so. And you'll get used to this system it can be a little bit difficult to begin with to actually figure out. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our sword on our number one button and our torch on our number two button. So now I can swap between them by just pressing those hotkeys. The next thing that you're going to want to do before you leave town is actually talk to the combat tutor who's near this crafting area over here right opposite the town center. So let's go ahead and speak to the combat tutor. Now you can talk to him about melee or ranged or both. So if you click on melee, you can ask him about attacking, blocking, control schemes, health and stamina, and he'll explain how the mechanics of the game work. I'm going to be explaining it to you in this video anyway, but it's good to check your knowledge anyway. But if you ask him about attacking and then tell him you want to learn about different weapon skills, and then you have a choice of sword, dagger, axe, club and spear. Now you can click through all of these like sword, for example, and it will actually give you a skill boost in those specific skills so you're going into it doing a little bit of extra damage as you play the game but we will go over that as we play through this video the next most important task on our list is to get money there are two ways of doing this i'll be showing you the best method early on though in a moment but for example if i just walk over here there's actually a field here and depending how many players are on um, you should actually be able to come over here and sort of just pick some fruits and vegetables up. And you can actually sell these 
from your inventory. So I have 113 white cavolos, which is worth one silver and 13 bronze coins. So you can go ahead and harvest these. And there's also some wolf peaches here. And all of this stuff can be used in cooking along with the carrots as well. Um, you can also pick plants from the wilderness and they can all be sold for lots of money. This is just a quick way to grab some in-game currency at the start of the game. However, if there are a lot of people online, as there will be on the stress test day, um, you probably won't be able to take this stuff. Also in the future, it will count as stealing. So I'll be showing you how you can make income now um, a lot faster. But before we do, I just want to quickly come over here to the equipment vendor and just show you that if we open our inventory we can right click on these items and sell them and we're going to have almost 10 silver there already and i can go ahead and buy myself an axe for one silver a pickaxe or another torch but for now i'm not going to bother with that i'm going to show you guys a much faster way to get gold so if you have a look on the compass at the top here from the market area in this main town of haven on the tutorial island we're going to head southeast out of the city. Now, currently, there's no map in the game. There is going to be a cartographer skill, but um, it doesn't exist yet. So um, there's no way of having any map. And the idea is that players are going to be hired as guides. We will just have to like explore and figure out the game as you go. Um, but a lot of like ugh, this game, as much as I enjoy it so far, there's no tutorials or player hand-holding at the start of the game. And I think it really does need that currently. Um, because there's there's no sort of explanation of how you can just sort of get started. And I think that's going to lead to a lot of player confusion and frustration early on about how different things interact in the world. And how you can just sort of get started doing really basic, you know, crafting and stuff like that so you know hopefully this guide will help you out and obviously you can subscribe for future more in-depth videos about mortal online 2 in the future but if this is something you agree with leave your comments below on what you want to see tutorials on in the future to help new players because especially in hardcore mmos like mortal online 2 it's essential not to just ruin new players as soon as they start up the game so we're heading straight southeast out of the front entrance of the city there all the way across this bridge and we're going to come across the graveyard here and this is going to have some basic sort of combat area where we can hone our skills against zombies and also make a lot of money early on just with our sword so we're going to get our sword out we're going to press x to get it out here i can also help this guy take out this zombie like so and i'm gonna let him pick up the loot from that zombie because it's not instance per player so i could steal his loot there if i wanted to but because i'm a nice person i'm not going to bother doing that um i'm gonna instead choose my own zombie to come and kill inside here as you can see this place is infested with undead though so let's go ahead and attack this guy now one thing i should explain before i attack him is if you look, if I hold down my attack direction, a little ring in the center there fills up. Now, as soon as that ring fills up, that's my maximum attack damage. So if I attack someone after the ring fills up, I do the maximum amount of damage. If I just swing my sword, it does a lot less damage. Also, if I hold down my attack and then it blinks like that, I'm also going to be doing less damage. So it's kind of about timing. There's actually quite a lot of skill in this game in that sense so i'm gonna hit him in the head i actually hit him with my hands there so it did a little bit less damage it only did 22 damage versus if i actually hit him properly with my sword then it should do like 66 damage or something so that did 90 damage which is obviously a lot higher so i'm gonna kite this guy backwards and just carry on attacking him like so and just try and aim for his head if I hit him in his armoured arm there, it will actually make a metal metallic sound and I'll do a lot less damage. So he's almost dead. There we go. I've taken him out and then I can go ahead and loot this little sack that he drops just here. And I can right click on these things to pick them up. And now I have 1029 walking dead carcass. So if I right click this... 
then I can butcher it, which means I can make it into ingredients that I can then sell. Or I can eat it if I control click it. So instead I'm just going to right click it and I'm going to hold to butcher it. And then it's going to turn it into bone tissue, which can be sold for 6 silver and 32 bronze, which is super easy money right there. And it also makes it into walking dead meat, which I can also cook um, and eat myself to, you know, create various cooking ingredients and so on. But that's another crafting skill in itself. And there's over, over 600 crafting skills in this game. So we'll be going over some of them in this video, of course. But for now, let's start off with the basics. The animations are quite difficult to predict. Like, he's attacking above right now. So he's attacking from the side right now, so I can block that. Now he's attacking from the right side, so I can block that. But the animation on these Walking Dead is kind of like it's a little bit difficult to kind of uh, predict which way they're going to be attacking you so you kind of have to get used to each enemy's animation um to see you know which direction you actually have to block otherwise you can actually just kite them so they can't hit you and he's also dropped some coins as well which we can loot and then i can go ahead and butcher this and as you butcher these animals, you're also going to be increasing your butcher skill as well and also increasing your combat skill and your strength. If you press L, you can actually see all the skills in the game and you have profession skills, action skills and veteran points, but that's something else. But as you guys can see, I've lost some health from engaging in combat there. So if I press L to open the skills tab, I can use the skill resting. My character will sit on the ground and you can see I'm slowly regenerating health now. It's going to take me 129 seconds to regenerate my health fully. You can speed that up massively if you buy things like bandages, make potions, or like make certain cooking ingredients to just have a certain standard health regeneration. But obviously currently we can just sit here and regenerate our health instead. You can see this guy on the left here actually has a spear. Now, spears are really good weapons. If you are kind of new to the game, I kind of consider them a great weapon to use, especially with a shield, because it's a lot easier to keep your distance and just stab enemies to death. Nice one, brother. Get wrecked, son. Ah. Die. Ah. Die. We've got another 100 clade gift experience, which obviously goes towards our skill points there. Oh my god, I actually took his head off. Just with like the pommel of my sword. Dude, that was nuts. Love that. Oh yes, look at that. Boom. Oh, if you, if you get like, you know, used to the weapon's range... You can really deal some damage while running away from enemies. Obviously, these are undead. If you try and deal with, like, the town guard like this, they will just destroy you. <laughs> so I have 4,900 uh, bone tissue, and that's worth about 50 silver. So also, just a quick note, they've now added to the game after a very quick patch just now that undead can drop worms, flesh walk ahead that can be sold for 20 silver, um, coins and also what you can butcher anyway so it's actually a lot faster to get money if they're also dropping heads too and they're also dropping arrows which is obviously really useful if we put our weapon away we can actually run faster and also if you're below 50 percent health you actually run a bit slower so it is worth resting to actually regenerate your health before heading off now, as you're coming back to town, you may also find some wild pigs that are very easy to kill. So if you actually go ahead and kill these, we can craft our own armor from them. Here's a pig that I've just killed and we can loot its bag here. It's got 960 pig carcass. Now, here's a quick tip on how you can get more money out of butchering pig carcasses and also zombie carcasses as well. As you can see, I can right click this when I'm in the wilderness and I can actually butcher it right here. But instead, if I choose not to do that and I choose to go back to town instead, I can actually get a lot more money. Once you come through the southeast entrance to town, you're going to want to head into the 
city itself and take a right just down this road immediately as you come in. And just here on the right hand side, you'll find the butcher, which has a sign just here. Pretty much every town has a butcher in the game. And if you go to the butcher table and open your inventory, you can add the pig carcass to the butcher table. And then you can hold down this button to butcher it. And as you can see, we get tons of different ingredients. We get the bone tissue, which is just like, you know, the zombie bone tissue. Uh, we get tallow, emalge, full grain leather, which we can use for armor crafting. And also pig meat, which obviously we can use for cooking. If you also find the butcher tutor in town, she'll actually give you a massive skill increase as well. So I recommend doing that if you really want to use the butcher skill to your full advantage. So now we've butchered the pig and we've got some full grain leather. What we can do is we can go to the crafting area in town just over here and speak to the crafting tutor. She, We can then talk to her about armor crafting and then... If we talk to her about this, she'll actually teach us how to craft armor. So we go to the armor crafting table and she's taught us how to craft the Caladean padded right, which looks like this. So if we open up our inventory and say we want to use the full grain leather that we found, we can then go ahead and craft this. Now, if you have a look at the bottom here, you have a choice of how much extra padding you have and how much extra core material you're using. You can use two different types of material here, like metals or leather, depending on the armor style and what you're creating. The higher these values, the higher the armor and the higher the weight. This is where it can get very complex, but at the start, I just leave this at 50% and just craft yourself some standard armor so you've got some defense at the start of the game. If you want to get super into detail, you can look at your statistics and you can figure out how much armor weight you can actually have on your character. And then you can experiment with this and make basically the most efficient armor set that for your character that doesn't slow them down too much and is under a certain amount of carry weight but it's completely up to you and what your playstyle is as to what your armor will be like i can make a whole video about that in itself so let's just go ahead and craft ourselves a little bit of armor here and also some torso armor as well and a left arm and we're also going to get um armor increase skills as well which will obviously affect our ability to craft stuff and then we can craft ourselves some trousers and then lastly we'll do the head armor. You, ca you can also unlock other armor styles and I'll talk to you about that when I go over how to make shields. Because the armor tutor will only teach you the most basic equipment in the game. So now we've got a full armor set. Let's go ahead and equip all of this on our character. You can see he starts to get dressed up with the armor there. And now we have a much higher armor value. You can see I am about four kilograms out of seven kilograms. So um, that's not going to affect my mana regen. I can still move very quickly, even though I am fully armored. Um, and we're pretty happy like this. And obviously crafting that armor ourselves was so much cheaper than buying like the chest pieces like 80 silver alone. So, you know, having the crafting expertise and just figuring out that armor crafting system is obviously a lot cheaper than buying everything. Now, the crafting tutor will teach you how to make bows, like short bows um, and round shields. And also, she'll teach you how to make weapons as well. Ask her about weapon crafting and that will unlock you the weapon crafting of daggers and all the different hilt types and also swords as well. But let's say for example, you wanted to craft a spear. How would you do that? Obviously we have enough money to come to the weapon vendor and buy a spear for 20 gold. But what happens if we want to craft things beyond what the uh, crafting tutors are teaching us? Well, the game doesn't explain this to you. And this is one of the things it's in dire need of like a sort of tutorial on why I'm making this video as well. Hopefully this improves with time because the developers are already doing massive improvements by just adding tutors into the game. But what we're going to do is buy some skill books and crafting recipes. So I'll show you where to get those next. So currently we're in the town center and we're going to go north, directly north past this little sort of training area over here. Um, down this alleyway um, and you, all these houses and stuff by the way if you like the look of them you'll actually be able to 
you know build and construct your own house at some point in the future and make your own lands and uh, get even a land deed if you're friendly with a faction to build inside certain town walls and stuff but anyway this is the library the book um, sign gives it away uh, you have a combat librarian there's different ways of learning skills in the game and this is a passive way of learning skills and recipes so you can learn about endurance or mounted combat mounted charging on horseback from these tutors by reading about it or alternatively you can just you know fight more or use a sword or spear to learn about it instead by doing um, there's another librarian over here who's going to teach you about survival, swimming, domestication and taming. You can get like animal pets. Um, there's over 600 skills in the game so it's kind of nuts to be honest. And then we have the crafting librarian. He's going to teach you about lots of different crafting recipes. So for example we already learned how to make one armor type but we can also learn how to make the guard armor as well if we've got enough money. We can also learn how to make a recurve bow by buying the book and reading it. Or we can learn how to make kite shields and all this other really awesome stuff. As you can see crafting spearheads is rather expensive so we need to save up for that research. But also you have lots of other skills like botany for example, magic librarian so all the different spells that are currently in the game that was only recently added so I'm sure they're going to expand on that. So now you guys understand where you can unlock new recipes I'm now going to go into detail about how to actually craft an item and get the materials for it. So let's have a look at shield crafting specifically we because I have unlocked shield crafting now and I've also unlocked the round shield recipe I can craft all the different types of shields I can put a core material a coating material inside here and then I can also add a frame material so you can have like an iron banded shield now to obviously craft one of these shields we're going to need some wood and some metal that we've extracted and that's going to take us a little bit of time to actually get those materials so I just brought a axe and a pickaxe and we're going to go outside and we're going to start grabbing some materials so we can get what we need to actually craft ourselves a shield this is a dapple wood tree but there's also a white wood tree just over here so we could chop this down or the other one each um, tree by the way in the game has its own property and different wood type so combining them in different ways with different weapons in composite bows for example it's going to give different properties to the weapon different strengths different weaknesses so if I sit here and carry on using my axe on this tree I'll keep getting lots of white wood which I can sell or use for crafting and I'm also going to carry on increasing my strength and my wood cutting skill and obviously the higher those stats are the more wood I'm going to get you know per second basically while cutting down this tree all right so i've got a bunch of white wood and dapple wood now and then we can come back to the crafting table and actually go ahead and craft something so as you can see i can craft all of these different types of shield i'm going to go with the large round shield and we're going to open our inventory and we're going to use the dapple wood as our core material and then the white wood as our coating material just here and then I can select the frame. Now obviously if I had iron I'd have a stronger frame but I can also use wood for the frame which actually makes it lighter as well. Um, and it also means because the shield is lighter that it costs less stamina to block with it but it has less durability. So there's lots of different sort of weightings to weapons and you can essentially make a weapon exclusively designed for someone else's character and their stats and attributes. Uh, or what they want, what kind of playstyle they want as well. So the crafting system is super deep um, in terms of what you can do with it. So let's use a dapple wood and we'll go for a bro a boss frame standard build, and then we'll just hold to craft it. And there we go. Now we can make our completely wooden shield. And here we have a large round shield with a boss frame. 
And as you can see, it tells us the durability is 421. The defense to blunt damage is only 15, but the defense to piercing and slashing is 28 and 26. And I obviously get crafting experience for crafting that too. If my crafting level was higher, then the shield would be better. Um, and there's some other factors involved there, as well as the materials you're using. So there we go. Now I have a shield and a spear. Now, earlier I was two-handing this spear, um, but if I one-hand it, it is still very much possible. You guys saw that, actually. I should probably mention that. So I tried to attack from above, and the game didn't let me because the roof is in the way. The, the um, physics collision in this game is super realistic. So, you know, like, if I try and attack sideways, I'll get blocked, you know, by any environment in the way. The same with the shields, like... If I'm holding my shield like this and I sort of block like that and constantly change direction towards people's swings, even if I'm not blocking in the right direction, I can still block them just because the physical mass of my shield is in the right place. So now I've taught you how to make a wooden shield, let me show you how to mine so you can extract stone where you can extract metal and then make ingots to use in metal crafting for stronger shields, sword blades, spearheads and so on. So you can start to experiment with that too. So we're once again at the southeast side of the city and as you can see there is an extraction grinder here and an extraction crusher. Now what we need specifically is some granum and granum is like the most common type of stone in the game there's tons of little nodes that can be mined around this area so we basically just want to come over here with our pickaxe equipped which we brought from the utility merchant earlier then just hold down r and we can just start mining this material now there are like three types of uh, stone that are currently in the game you can see my mining is already increasing now as you mine you can see i'm increasing my igneous rock skill and i'm also increasing my intelligence my lore about rocks and also my mining skill as well and we'll also be increasing our attributes from literally just wielding a pickaxe and constantly using it against the rock now i do believe my the skill experience is currently massively buffed, so obviously it's going to be um, a bit of a boost to actually leveling up quickly. So as I mine, I'm actually getting granum piles, which are basically just a pile of rock that has pretty much no use to us currently. You need to extract it, and then you can get the metal ores that can be smelted and refined into metal ingots, which we need to craft our shield. But of course, the game doesn't explain any of this to you. It's purely through trial and error that you need to figure these things out. I think they need some kind of beginner tutorial to like help people out like this at the start of the game. Otherwise, it's just going to be a little bit frustrating to people trying to figure out what things different items interact with so they can actually get what they need to craft things. All right, so we now have about 1,000 granum, and I can go ahead and head over to the extraction grinder to actually get some materials from all of this resource. So this is what an extraction grinder looks like, by the way. It's basically a windmill with a grinding stone. And if you go over to this bucket here, you can go ahead and place all of your granum inside it by right-clicking. Don't drag it because sometimes it'll be like, oh, you threw it on the floor and just wasted everything. So hold to start extraction. And there we go. You see on the top left here, it says extracting item. So it takes 70, 80 seconds. The, honestly, the first time I used this, I just thought I'd lost everything and it was a bug in the game. But essentially, as soon as this counts down, it will just appear in your inventory. So we're just going to hang around until that happens. I mean, we could even go and mine some more. The more granum you put inside, the longer it will take to actually extract it. So there you go. Now the time has run out. We have got one, two, three, four different types of ingredients. Granum powder it, at this point in the game is a good thing just to sell on uh, to merchants to make yourself some money. But the most important we thing we want is flake stone, blood ore, and, and amarantum. So we're going to take those things and we're going to head back inside the city. Now if I have a look at my profession skills and go to extraction, you guys can see my extraction level is only 21 and basic ore extraction is only level 4 which is really low. And for that reason, it means I won't get as much materials out of, out of extracting a lot of ore compared to if I had a higher level. Also, there's very specific types of ore that are a bit rarer and I won't be able to find compared to the common ores. 
Now, after extracting some ore, you'll need to come back to the bookstore and then you need to go upstairs and talk to this gentleman just here, the extraction librarian. He's going to sell you the thermal appliance skill book, which costs 10 gold. So go ahead and read this. So here we are back at the blacksmith area and the crafting stations and we're going to use the extraction furnace next. And we're going to put inside here all of our amarantum. And then we get the time up here. Take 10 seconds to extract these items within. And there you go. Now we have 15 black and 38 cuprum and 20 calum on 7 electra. So now when we're making our shield, we can use the cup room instead to actually get a metal shield base or we can make a sword or a spearhead out of it or anything else using the appropriate crafting books. But to now craft it, we would need 138 units of cup room. Now I did some further exploring on the outer edges and came across a group of bandits. I know bandits do drop very good loot, but they're also very well armored. And I thought, hmm, I can probably take one of them on at once. So I only triggered one of them thinking I can probably kill this guy. And he ran me down relentlessly. And my terrible spear, literally, it felt like I was poking him with a barge pole. So he obviously defeated me rather easily as well, I might add. But that brings me on to my next point, death. Now, if you do die in the game, you basically enter this ethereal state where you'll see all these red glowing beacons in the sky. These red beacons represent priest locations. So if you head towards one and then go and speak to a priest, you can then hold R and you'll actually resurrect yourself. Now, this being the tutorial island, you'll actually respawn with a sword and torch again. So I wouldn't worry too much about dying with your starting equipment at the start of the game. You see, I have a torch and sword but I've lost all my other stuff that I had like the shield and spear we crafted. Now I've only shown you a fraction of what you can experience in Mortal Online 2 and I mean they've still got so much they want to add to this game if you look at their roadmap and they're patching it like twice a month it's kind of ridiculous actually compared to other early access games I've jumped on and had a look at. So if there's any other thing you're confused about let me know in the comments maybe someone else will answer your questions as well and I'll do a video covering it if they don't. We've really only skimmed over crafting in general and some of the mechanics we talked about today. I just wanted to give you like a general idea of how things work so you could kind of at least have a step in the right direction. But there really is so much more depth to each individual weapon crafting system and what you can do with it and what you can create around your own character. It's kind of silly how in-depth it is to be honest. Definitely one that the hardcore players will enjoy but let me know what you guys think in the comment section and if you found this video helpful please do leave a like and you can subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and goodbye.